told what to do since. <laughs> I want to think about that. <laughs> well, I don't want you to get the idea that I am the only one in this camp that do, does all the work in this building. I do have helpers. Call them cookies. In fact, Miss Nora, you're traveling with her. Miss Eleanor is her real name. We bump back over here, along with Wrinkles and Dora Jean. It's not real warm back there, though. It's got flat boards for walls. Let's the cold in. Doesn't keep the cold out like in here where it's got the logs for walls. Probably won't be long that we'll be bunking out over here, closer to this barrel stove. Yeah, just this, well, probably a week ago now that uh, got up and good thing I didn't have my boots too far under the bunk because they would have been frosted right there to the floor. Got them on and crazy Mary, she's hollering. That's wrinkles. You can call her wrinkles sometimes too. Yeah. She's hollering, Rebecca, I can't get out of bed. And I said, well, it's your turn to flip the 500 sweat pads this morning. You best get out of bed. Nobody else is going to do it for you. The men are going to be in here in about an hour to eat. She said, you don't understand. I can't get out of bed. Her hair had frosted right to the wall. We put the paper up to keep some of the wind out. She did get up then and, and go ahead and flip the 500 sweat pads. You ever flip that many pancakes before? You ever call pancakes something else? Flapjacks, stove lids if you burn them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 500 sourdough pancakes every morning for breakfast. Along with that will be sour belly fried up in the oven. The salted pork comes in barrels like this here. So does the red horse. That's the beef. What color is beef before you cook it? Red. Why do you call it horse? Never name. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows when you go 10 miles down the road, they'll call it something different. Okay. But in here, I'm not sure if it's always because they don't all speak English or each other's languages, or if it's just to confuse greenhorns. <laughs> I think or that has a lot to do with it. Maybe it's horse instead. Oh, I, I would say if something got injured, I wouldn't let it go. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> but I'm not like the French Canadians that, are, that do cook the first round up a little bit more often. And not saying if a moose traveled into camp either that he'd make it through the other end. <laughs> but I do go through 80 pounds of meat a day, so it's important that I have it all barreled up and, and ready to uh, be served. I can't guarantee getting wild game up here. Plus, the men don't like it as much. They get it back on the homestead, you know, when things are a little bit tougher out there. Here, it's a nice company to work for. I don't even have a fair foreman, even though he's tougher than a tine, uh, pine knot in February. But he is fair. And uh, a little different than the horse that I started working with the very first two years that I was a cookie. His name was Biddleluck McGee. He was good too, but he got the name. Biddleluck, for a reason. <laughs> yes. You know, if we don't make contracts, we're not going to get paid. So it's important that I, as the cook, make sure everybody has good food on the table and plenty of it. So not only with that saw belly fried in the oven, we're also going to have heaps of oatmeal, wind timber at every meal, log and berries at every meal, spuds at every meal, cold shuts this morning for dessert, tomorrow will be sticky buns or skid roads, and blackjack or swamp water to wash everything down with. <laughs> Sounds delicious, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, the wind timber, 35 pounds of beans every day. Meal. Whoa. Every meal you're going to see them. Wind timber. The log and berries, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Berries in the middle of winter like this. How do you find out they're prunes? Every meal. They say it's to keep from getting scurvy. But I think it keeps time shorter into one holder eight seed. <laughs> Especially when it's spit freezing cold and a glaze of ice is under you. Who wants to waste time reading catalogs? Get in and out quick. But you'll see all the food in dish ups like this one here. 
So many of them on the table, you hardly have room for your elbows. And they're going to be in here stewed up for breakfast so you can drizzle it on your oatmeal because they don't get any milk or any dairy products out here. There's no eggs out here. Start thinking, how many cows and how many chickens would I need for 80 people? Mm -hmm. So if you don't see I'm in here, doesn't mean I forgot. Just disguised in something else. <laughs> like the cakes and cookies for supper go along with that roasted meat. And the Noon meal has all the meat packed in here with uh, vegetables as a stew. Easily send that out with 24 loaves of bread and 30 pies. Bring it out so you don't waste time walking all the way back here to eat. But we do blow the Gabriel horn every time it's meal time. For breakfast, a good hour before it's daylight, we blew the horn this morning and they came packing in like a pack of wild grizzlies that hadn't eaten all winter. Slammed open that door, and luckily the frost fell on the outside. And not the inside. Then they scrambled to their seat. You already know where you're going to be sitting. Do you have any skills? Well, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I do. Have, well, you mean like for, for what? Just skills? To be here. What would you do? Oh, what job uh, would you? Well, I could, I could be a scaler. I guess oh. I'm a forester, actually. So, yeah. Oh, so you know all the gazintas and everything then? Well. Yeah, I'm probably kind of a weakling in the woods, but uh, yeah. yeah. Gazintas, you know your gazintas. I, uh, I don't know. A that. two goes into four. You got that okay. right. <laughs> Maybe you ought to. <laughs> <laughs> <He's a drunk. laughs> yes. Well, if you do have a skill, you're going to be sitting up here warmer by the stove. Oh, that's good. This is where the push sits right here. You know, who pushes you to work hard every day, even when you don't feel like it. You probably know somebody like that already too, right? I suppose, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have danger to your job, like axemen over there and, and the sky hooks, this is probably the most dangerous job. It's the men who stand on the icy logs as the log comes rolling up onto the sled to make sure it's balanced. Then you got Teamsters mid table over here. You got Slayers mid table over there. Chainers down there. You got Teamsters down or uh, uh, Drum Hogs down there. And so everybody has their own spot. So you quickly sit down. You shut up. You eat and you get out in about 15 minutes, maybe 20. Is that too long, ladies? No. Not too Does it remind you of Christmas dinner, though? You cook and you bake for two days, and the family sits down to eat. And how long does it take? And that's what it's like. No talking, except if you need something more. If you need something, you holler for it. And my cookies will dash down and, and bring it to you nice and full, because they're the ones that are going to do everything that I don't have time to do. Everything that I don't want to do <laughs> as well. Yes? Are meals different on Sundays? Other than they'll be in here for noon. That's about the only difference. And maybe the way I fix the potatoes, not too sure. 26 pounds of potatoes or thereabouts. Here's the mashers. So we don't mash them very often. But otherwise, pretty much the same. Uh, the pies, maybe I would make a shoe pack pie for Sunday since it doesn't have a top crust. It's, well, lemon meringue. Of course, no eggs for the meringue part. Of course, no lemons for the lemon part either because I don't get any fresh fruit. But it's made with lemon extract and cornstarch and cider vinegar, and you mix it up. Of course, with cornstarch in it, you overbake it any. It turns out like the bottoms of the boots that Jake will sell you over there. Yeah. Well, I've been rambling on. Yes? So, uh, at the end of the season, there, as a cook, what do you do during the Ooh, you're not looking for a wife, are you? Do uh, loggers follow the the the, the cookie uh, or the cook uh, wherever she goes? Mm -hmm. 
Only if they're looking for a wife. Not looking for a wife. <laughs> <laughs> but they will come to this camp again next year and the year after, finding out which camp I'm at. We won't be here next year. That's another job of my cookies is to haul water. They're going to be doing six hours of dishes every day and such. So we're not going to dig a well. So we won't be here. But they'll find out which camp. So do you have any teammates? Did they not talk about that down in the bunkhouse? Yeah, not for us ladies. I'm exhausted by the end of my day. I start about two hours before daylight, about two, three hours after sundown. And I I don't really, but I can hear some of the music when they play that for the, the stag dance down there. Of course, ladies aren't allowed down. Of course, once you smell it, you don't care if you're invited. <laughs>